Hi, my name is Lizzie. I am the vocalist of The Beautiful Monument, and we just recently released our latest single, Duerme. Very nice. Thanks for joining us today, Lizzie. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, now, part of the reason I asked you to do that intro was so you could pronounce the song name for me <laughs> if I could get it right. But after hearing it roll off your tongue, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually started making a compilation video of people trying to pronounce it because I just think it's heaps funny because everyone's <laughs> so Australian and just it, it's really funny. It's cute. <laughs> well, I'm not going on your video, mate. So I'm just going to call it the D song. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so the beautiful monument recently released the D song with late last <laughs> month. So how's the early reception been for it? Really good, which has been really nice. Like I didn't really know how it would go having like bits of Spanish in a song, but um, it's been received really, really well. So that's, that's nice. Uh, less anxiety inducing now that it's out in the wild. Uh, yeah, I don't have to sit there and overthink it. <laughs> so why, why, where the Spanish angle? Like you don't look Spanish. I am Spanish. Sure? Yeah. Like painfully Spanish. Both of my parents moved here. Um, I'm the only child that was actually born in Australia, which sucks, but yeah, both my brothers were born in Spain. Um, my parents moved here. I don't know. I think Australia was doing like a million years ago, uh, like trying to get um people from overseas into the country for like work and stuff so my dad got paid to come over to Australia to work um and yeah he always tells me he said to mum like we're moving to Australia and she was like what's that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah very Spanish well that explains why it rolled <laughs> off your tongue so well <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a bit more about the song from a musical point of view and what you were going for with it um, I think we wanted to do kind of like a throwback to like, I guess, like 2007 kind of feel. Um, it has very, I don't know, it was kind of inspired a little bit by like Pierce the Veil and cool shit that we were super into um, when we were younger. Um, but the song itself, like meaning wise, is definitely about um, my struggles within like just being a musician and the self-doubt and the people who like, you know, you think are on your team um, that end up kind of letting you down um, or responding in a way that you weren't expecting someone who's supposed to be on your side to respond. But yeah, um, the whole recording process or writing music is a super, super daunting thing for me and it has been for years. And, like, I've been doing this shit for, like, 12 years now. Like, this band in particular, I think TBM's almost 13 years old now. Um, but, yeah, it was just... I guess I wasn't used to constructive criticism until I came into this band and I understand that constructive criticism is a um is super important now uh but at the time uh I wasn't used to it because I was very used to everyone being like oh everything you write is great it's amazing so when I was told you know something I wrote fucking sucked uh <laughs> it was definitely a bit of a punch to the to the ego and it hurt so yeah um now I I don't know. I think that whole experience kind of traumatized me in a way because, um, yeah, every time I have to go to record or write anything, I am so anxious about it. Like even last year I was like, do I even bother? Like, do I keep going with music? Am I even like good enough to do this? I can't write. Well, I feel like I can't write for shit, but I obviously am quite capable. But in my head, I'm like, I don't do anything right. Why do I even bother? Uh, <laughs> typical self-doubt <laughs> typical self-doubt I'm only asking this question because I've had people ask it of me and I'm not sure. a songwriter so I've got no idea but those problems you're going through like saying your self-doubt with your writing and things like that like how, how do you how do you how are you able to write that into a song where you know other people are going to listen to it and judge you when that's actually what's wrong with you in the first place like it's does, like it doesn't sort of sound like the type of thing you do like it's it's great that you do but it just doesn't sound on the surface like it would help I know. You. It's super, like, contradicting. Hey, mm. um, like, it's weird, I guess. I don't know, because I've been doing it for so long. It's kind of, like, maybe, like, an expectation kind of thing of, like, this is my, you know, this is what I do. This is what I've wanted to do for such a long time. And, like, before, you know, all of the negativity and shit, like, that was what my heart was set on, was being a fucking musician. So I felt like I owed it to myself. and. Um, you know, the people in my band to like keep pushing myself to write as best as I could, 
even though like I know how I was feeling internally like it's just a diary entry and if Mm. people want to read it and judge it or like listen to it and judge it I mean not everyone's gonna like everything I do or everything we do rather um and that's okay like everyone's entitled to their own opinion but yeah that's a that's a real weird one I don't know Mm. I've never really thought about it I just like I know why you're actually opening yourself up for more criticism in in a way it's sort of a hundred percent. Um, so I'm just digging my own damn hole here. <laughs> Hold the shovel. <laughs> um, <laughs> but when we wrote this song, um, I was honestly like stumped on what to write about because I had like just all of my lyrics and shit had pretty much just been about how I'm a piece of shit and like I'm not really like good at fucking anything. Um, so when I wrote this one, I actually um did a tarot reading for myself um to like see what I should write about like what I should be writing about so when I pulled the cards um it pretty much pushed me to be like okay yeah it's fine just write about it like obviously something out in the universe is telling me that I need this to come out so I did I wrote about it and it is out in the world and if people want to judge it I don't care that's fine that's on them yeah, well, I'm going to record that little snippet and cut it out. And every time someone asks me, I'm just going to say, listen to this. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this one's for me. I can't hide behind anyone else on this question. But one thing I've always wondered with musicians, like a lot, you, you write songs about the most painful parts of your life, you know, like when you're yeah. singing them 5, 10, 15 years later and you're over that period of your life, does it ever take you back to your Every single points? time. Yeah. Every single time, especially with songs like Stay, for example, like every time I sing that song, like on stage, like when I, if you hear like the slightest crack in my voice or anything like that, or the emotion, I can promise you a hundred percent. It is just me being a hundred percent genuine because I just go straight back to that time in my life, like with my parents and, you know, my family at that point in time. And you know, like really shitty family circumstances where it was very much the typical, you know, like, oh, you're my child, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever and this, that Don't and the other. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, or piercings or anything. Look at me now, it's not a phase. <laughs> um, but, yeah, same with, like, give up and that was that is very deeply about, um, you know, depression. Um, so every time I have to sing that song too, it kind of steers me back to like not necessarily the negativity of it all, but like it's kind of a reminder that it's just a bad day, not a bad life. You can pull through mm-hmm. this. It's like I'm not okay, but I'll be just fine. Like it's it's a nice subtle reminder. But, yeah, they definitely take me back. Um, doesn't matter how long, you know, down the track or how yeah, long how I've been singing. How many times you sung it? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's amazing. It's like, oh, shit, it's this one again. And then internally <laughs> I'm like, I'm really fucking mad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so now the big question with Duerme. I, I had a crack. Hey, that was crack. perfect. You crushed it. You even <laughs> had the rolled R. I, I, I know. <laughs> I've been practicing that in my head for the last five minutes. <laughs> love it. <laughs> so you did you see a, a standalone single or a part of a bigger album or EP picture? It is a standalone single. So um, full disclosure, we were supposed to have a, a bigger body of work, but just like timing and stuff had just, um, gotten away with us like from us uh so it will just be a standalone um just due to I guess how long ago we'd sort of recorded it and stuff uh we've actually started writing more shit this year uh and we're going back into the studio in a couple of weeks to continue a bigger body of work uh just something that's like uh more I guess up with the times and like to date with like music now mm-hmm. um but we'll most definitely probably be reworking the songs that we were supposed to have for this um, other release that is just not going to happen. Um, yeah, we'll be looking at reworking those songs and just spicing them up and making them more relevant to the time now mm-hmm. as opposed to two years ago when we recorded it. Yeah, right, cool. So, yeah. <clears throat> so you actually released your debut album, On the Sin, in 2017. So that's what seven years I can add up. <laughs> but how how has like the band changed or grown with your music from then to what you're actually doing now? Um I think COVID really stitched us up. Um, because that album had sort of like 
just been sort of getting traction and shit and then like we'd been slowly like releasing stuff and getting things out and we were you know getting on like festival lineups and stuff and like then all of a sudden COVID hit and it felt like a, just a giant lull and because we all live in different states it's so much fucking harder um like we didn't see each other for two years yeah, right. um but because of like how long it's been now and I guess like the cohesiveness between record one and two um we're very excited because the stuff that we're writing now is like brand spanking new like you know we're working as the four of us and it's like a very different and very cool experience like bringing in everyone's different influences to create this new tvm uh which i'm very very excited for um but yeah it's nice i guess like i don't know it's it's cool having like you know adam alex amy and i um in a studio together for the first time as like this four piece because it's just we gel really well and like although our influences are so different the songs that we've created so far for this next body of work have just tied in and come together so nicely so we're just fucking over the moon okay that's awesome <laughs> hey you've only got three shows left on the breaking upward tour with red hook so you're playing in do. newcastle this thursday september 12th sydney on friday and finish in brisbane this saturday so how's the tour been going apart from cursed it's been really fun <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's been great. Like we got to play Jindabyne. Who the fuck goes to Jindabyne? How random. Uh, d- d- two hours out of Canberra, uh, we got to see no snow. Uh, we saw like a little bit of snow like on top of a mountain, but there was a hundred kilometer winds. It was cold as shit. Um, we, that was the weekend that we hit a kangaroo. So, well, I, I deem the kangaroo hit us because we locked eyes and I could just, I was like, brother, don't. And he did it anyway. Um, so you, so... you didn't back down, <laughs> did you? <laughs> no, I did not. No, 12 <laughs> years of doing this, I had mentally prepared myself for this day because I knew it was going to fucking happen one day. And I was very, very grateful that I was the one behind the wheel because damn, like I just, I, I was ready for this shit. I will never. <laughs> for this shit. <laughs> yeah. Like. My vegan card probably revoked, but I still maintain <laughs> that he came at me and it was either him or my band. And I love my friends more than this kangaroo that picked a fight with us. Um, <laughs> but the shows that weekend were really, really good, really, really fun. Um, Melbourne was insane, like very sick show to play. Um, the other bands, because we missed out on the Perth leg, um, they got stitched up with flights. Uh, so some of the bands, like we had to end up going on early because Eat Your Heart Out's flight didn't land until like they started playing. So oh, we yeah. took their slot so that they could actually play um, that night. It's just fucking chaos. Um, but Adelaide was really good. Adelaide was sick. I don't think, oh no, someone kicked out our um, our click track. That. <laughs> That was the only like downside of Adelaide, but Adelaide was great. We hung out in the park. I got to play my Bratz game on Switch, so I was having a great fucking time. So <laughs> the bartender made me a damn coffee. It it was just great. It was so fun. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens this weekend. Yes, well, <laughs> you guys have toured with and played with heaps of international bands like Evanescence, Escape the Fate, The Sleepwood Sirens, but. Touring with a fellow Australian, with a few fellow Australian bands, has got to be that little bit more satisfying, doesn't it? It is really cool. Like mm. it's so sick because we're all like on the same page. We all laugh at the same shit, which is really nice. Um, and everyone's really like sweet and like instant best friends, which I found is like evanescence aside because those guys were a fucking enigma like it was so insane that they actually wanted to spend time with us because that shit's like unheard of Mm. like everyone that i've spoken to who's like played with international bands they say they're quite quiet and they take a bit to like warm up to you but nah fuck that evanescence were just like hey what's up this is our security guard big t and big t would come in and be like cool the guys want to hang out with you now come on leave your green room it's time to spend time with us so we were like what is going on here? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so fucking humbling. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, it's really nice touring with Australian bands just because, yeah, like I said, it's like instant best friends. Everyone's fucking talking to each other and shit straight away. And they un- we all understand each other's humour, which is dumb. 
<laughs> That's one thing, eh? the foreigners, especially the Americans, don't understand our humour at all. They don't even understand our language half the time. Half the time, yeah. And they just <laughs> smile and nod politely and you're like, you have no idea. I'm so sorry that we're That's like when this. That's you have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That, that tour and that run of shows does finish this Saturday in Brisbane, mate. So what's next for the beautiful monument after that? You got anything else planned? Uh, we're just recording this year. Like, um, we're keeping it quiet. We have an all-ages show coming up in Melbourne. Uh, I don't quite remember the date of it. I think it's for a freezer show, which is awesome. Um, and then we finally get to play to a younger crowd, which is nice. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, just recording, working on, like, just focusing on getting this new music like finish so that we can have a bigger body of workout for everyone next year. So yeah, Very all exciting. Nice. Now, before we let you go, I started up a new little thing where I, I dig into people's Facebooks or bands, Facebook's accounts before I speak to them. <laughs> I find a couple of photos and I'm going to flash up on the screen and tell me what's going on here. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing too bad. There wasn't actually that much to find on you guys, to be honest, but I found this one. It's what's it like a, what's going on there? Um, before every um, show, we always stretch uh, and we have like a little group stretch session. I don't know if you can see, I'm actually holding Amy's boob. <laughs> <laughs> She's my wife. It's okay. Um, but yeah, we always do group stretches. And then Alex, um, every time before a show, she will like, they'll always give us a pep talk and be like, you're the best. You're the best. Like, we're going to fucking smash this. Uh, and it's just great. Alex is the best fucking hype man ever. Like, it's so good. But yeah, that's just stretching, stretching before a show, you know, head banging and shit. competitions to think you can keep the leg up the longest? No, but I might, might start. Might have that's to start. That's not a bad one, eh? No, nah, get some free money that we don't have. <laughs> well, that sort of leads into the next one because it explains why you are stretching. Like, how the hell can you play a face and kick your leg that high at the same I time while banging your head? I don't know. I am perpetually just so impressed by Amy's high kicks. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. There's so many photos with someone in your band kicking. It's like, just, yeah, we got the high kicks happening. Well, we have, look, we have fun with it. It's fun. No wonder <laughs> Hers are the most so impressive. It looks like he could do some damage pretty quick. Correct. Correct. I don't think I can kick my leg that high, though. Like, I do kickies, but like, not that high of a kicky. I could kick the shit out of your shins, but I ain't going any higher than that. <laughs> Correct. Anything higher is sports as far as I'm concerned. And I am not I am not that guy. I'm not a sports guy. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> oh shit. All right, Lizzie. Well, thanks very much for your time today. The single Thank you. Duerme is out now. It's a cracker of a song. The Thank guys you. Beautiful Monument are on tour with Red Hook and a couple other bands. I'm sorry I haven't got their names here. Eat your but- heart out and patient sixty seven. That's that they are. We've got three shows left this Thursday, Newcastle, Friday, Sydney, Saturday, Brisbane. So hopefully I'll try and catch you at the Brisbane show. Otherwise, I've already got some new stuff out.